Okay, hello, Jack Powers here. Um, what we have is another video. I mean, there's so many videos that are out there now. There's like literally probably like thousands of them that are available um, through public records requests. I didn't request it, but it is a public record and it shows another um, another incident, another typical incident with police officers really going above and beyond the call of duty, so to speak. They definitely have a, a mission to go fishing, and they just, you know, it's it's like... Do you really even want to ride around in a car? Do you want to, you know, even though it's a small chance you're going to get pulled over, unless you're in certain neighborhoods or certain places, um, yeah, do you really want to take a chance on all? Because in this next video that I'm going to narrate through, um, you'll see that this could have quickly become uh, a shooting incident. It could have. This deputy seems to be somewhat off in his um, in his mindset. In his, I don't know if it's drugs or alcohol or just the kind of person that they hired for this job. Um, sometimes it's all of that, but. Yeah, it's just, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's nuts. And you'll see how quickly this could have turned into something because look, if, if a police officer, if, if a sheriff's deputy pulls you over and you pull over and stop and all of a sudden you see him running up to your passenger side door with his gun drawn and he yanks open that door I don't know about you, but one of my first thoughts might be to hit the gas. <laughs> I'm telling you. I mean, because you got somebody running up to the side of your vehicle with a handgun drawn and, and yanking your door open, your passenger side door, and, 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 and putting the gun on you. I mean, on a, on a ticky-tack traffic stop, it doesn't make sense. Okay, this dude's in a pickup truck somewhere in Texas, Tom Green County, wherever the fuck okay. that is. But he grabs his camera, because this guy has just ran up to his truck and yanked okay. his door Roller, open. And, I let you way back you, know, you, you can see the gun in his hand, but he had it pointed on the street. when he first opened the no door. Let's listen to what here. happened here, what this exchange where? between where the at? two of them the is lane. like at the beginning let of me tell lane. you yeah that's what i just the said driver I turned off, was I saw you. pretty cool screen. about okay, this well, whole thing he did I'm everything he was supposed to do okay. you have no reason to come up here and just open my door like see that. this guy the driver is he's calm He's cool. This guy pulled his gun. He's giving his Thank insurance, you. his Both registration, you. his license. Both of them on the wheel. All right, remain there. Do not move, okay? okay. Go take the vehicle. Sounds good. You shut my door. Will you shut this door? I'm going to hop out. What are you doing? Hop out. For what? Hop out. What's the reason? Hop out, man. What's the reason? Can you tell me what the reason is? You come up here and you pull your gun on me and then you rip my door open for no reason. What's your reason for pulling my door open? What's the reason for pulling the door open? It's an older truck, man. So you just rip my door open because it's an older truck? And, and you're rolling. People who roll have warrants. I haven't they rolled have, anything. They have pot all over their pants. I don't it have any. Like marijuana your vehicle. This is out. sawdust. Okay, sounds good. Put your hands up on the vehicle. For what? Hands up on the vehicle, please. 
I'm just gonna frisk You're you. not gonna frisk. What am I under Put arrest for? Put your hands for? up on the What table. am I under arrest for? I'm frisking you for weapons, Bubba. Okay. I'm not putting your handcuffs. It's crazy, right? <laughs> it's just absolutely bonkers. Um, but that's supposedly the reason for pulling him over, and now it turns into this full blown search. But this happens all over the country. Every single day this is happening. Um, where cars are just being pulled over on a on a traffic stop a pretextual traffic stop and then they start going through the procedures step out of the car we want to search you to make sure you don't have any weapons do you mind if we search your vehicle here he didn't even the dude didn't even like you know ask for permission to search he just started looking around and 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 doing his thing i mean he's this guy is obviously either stoned or drunk or in some kind of a, a different mental state i don't know which is sawdust from working because I've been cutting all day. You feel all up on you. There's also pot on your edge of your, uh, your seat, man. There's pot on the edge no, of my no, no. seat. Come here, come here. You cannot go back in the car. Well, I want to see all this. Yeah, for sure. But that, uh, again, you uh -huh. rolled up on me and uh, ripped my door open because my mud flaps were too short. Yes, sir. So that's normal procedure for you to just run up and rip doors open Especially because the mud flaps are too short? We have a car rolling, man. I wasn't rolling. I got to a place where I could pull over so that people weren't stuck getting in and out. There were people who roll have drugs. I wasn't warrants. rolling doing anything. I was sitting there calmly they're not, cruising. They're, they're not too any good, man. So I'm uh, I'm automatically bad because I didn't want to block the drive. This is how it goes. Instead of he's got the guy illegally detained. Now he's calling for her, like more units to come to the scene because he wants to perform what's called a PCE search, probable cause search of the vehicle. He's trying to do everything he can do to justify his actions. Now that he's taken his actions, this is all in hindsight. He's just trying to cover his ass. Somehow he thinks that this is doing it, but all of the time this dude is recording him and that's very smart this guy must have a body camera himself which is what i have and i could tell you when i wear that body camera out and when i have been previously i have been approached by uh individuals and even police officers when we were parked on the street over by uh, commercial and transport, I was approached several times by police officers, and they always take a little different tact when you have when they see you're wearing a camera. They always start to act a little more professional. I'm not saying that they were doing anything wrong. Um, the ones that approach me, or would have if I didn't have the camera, but having the camera is a decent layer of protection but see he's just making the guy wait 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 for what for what this is just a good dude a working dude just an average dude out there and you know he's getting harassed by this cop there's no probable cause because you came up and just ripped my door open Oh, nice. Now he's trying to get a tent ticket. He's going to try and get something today. Yeah, he's just waiting for the rest of them to show up so he can finish the search and no, I'm not answering uh, tear that truck mind. apart is what he's going to do. And this is just plain wrong. The reality here is that police, they shouldn't be allowed to pull over a vehicle for some rinky-dink violation. If there's a taillight out, if you don't have license plate illuminated, if 
there's your mud flaps are too short or they think you've got too much tint on your window or even whatever it is that that they're gonna say um, they should just write the ticket if they see it they observe it they write it in their car maybe they follow you enough you know to get your license plate number and um, you know ticket the vehicle through electronic means you know whatever why are you even bothering to pull over a vehicle and all these vehicle stops now are not just and they haven't been for a long time this is what people don't understand it's not that you've committed some kind of, of violation on the roads that that causes police to get involved it, it's not that at all that's obvious this is an investigatory technique it's called fishing they go fishing for suspects if they see certain people looking a certain way driving a certain vehicle at a certain place and time they are apt to pull you over Jane and I got pulled over in Syracuse we didn't even get a video of it um, we started making the video, but they, they released us and let us go because they knew right away that this wasn't going anywhere. But it was obvious that it wasn't because I didn't use my turn signal at 2.30 a.m. in the morning to turn into a gas station out in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. Um, it was because... They wanted to know what was in the vehicle. They wanted to know who was in the vehicle. They wanted to know where we were coming from and where we were going. They wanted to us to put all the windows down so they could do a visual search inside the vehicle. And, you know, I did all that to a certain degree, and then I stopped. I told them, that's it. You know, we've given you all the information we're going to give you. If there's a citation that's going to be issued, go ahead and issue that so we can be on our way. And they came back about three or five minutes later and said, here's your license, here's your, your paperwork for the car. It was a rental. See, we got to go on, a, on another call. And he told me that I had been rude to him, but I hadn't been rude at all. My, my position was simply, hey, you know, I'm going to cooperate with you to a certain degree because you're out here on this fishing trip. I shouldn't really be cooperating at all, but I don't want to get into a situation where, because they've got all the other techniques just like you just saw. They will keep you on the side of the road. They will, but you never give consent to search. Never, never, never. I mean, if, if there's some, a few questions that you can answer right away, uh, you know, to, to mollify them or whatever that, that aren't, that isn't anything that's going to be harmful to you or, you know, put anybody in jeopardy, then yeah, go ahead and give them that. I mean, if, if, if it's con more convenient, if it relaxes them or, or, or lets them know that you're not doing something. But once you start, you know, once right away, if you, you know, if you immediately bow up on them, then they're probably going to go through their little repertoire of techniques. Step out of the car, put your hands up against the car, I've got to search you for weapons, officer safety. Now, step to the back of the vehicle, they'll continue to question you, maybe they'll call in another unit. Um, they, they're going to go look in the car or try to with their flashlights. If it's dark out, if not, they're just going to look through the windows and look around, you know, because they want to see if there's anything in plain view that they can say was contraband. They're looking for evidence of some kind of a bigger crime, obviously, than, than what they pulled you over for. And that's just wrong. That's just, to me, that's straight up unconstitutional. 
that straight up violates the Fourth Amendment. You know, you're, you have a right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures, which means, now, the Supreme Court has carved out so many exceptions to the Fourth Amendment that there's really not even a Fourth Amendment left anymore. It's been gutted. The Fourth Amendment said you've got to have a warrant. Would they be able to pull over a car and search it? It would stop the whole fishing expedition thing if police had to have a warrant per the Constitution. But this, this fishing expedition shit, that's got to come to a stop. Supreme Court has to come up with some new cases and overturn these old cases with, you know, this Terry stops bullshit and uh, detention for investigation. And, you know, you, I think you have to have some serious probable cause of a felony that's being committed or has been committed by the person operating that vehicle. And then it only goes to the person themselves. That authority doesn't extend to the vehicle unless there's some nexus, some connection, direct connection to the vehicle. In other words, if I'm a police officer, I pull over a vehicle because I have information that the driver it just murdered somebody and I see a bunch of blood in the back seat. Well, okay. Now there's probable cause to take a further look inside that car in the trunk or whatever to see if maybe the victim or victims are, are still alive or if there's any more or whatever. But, you know, outside of something like that, I just don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. This has been a long-standing issue, needs to be resolved. And the only way it's going to be resolved is by the Supreme Court. That's it. If they don't do it, then, you know, it's still just kind of a police.